Now, um, Guru Fala, we've been using it uh, everywhere in our faces, all the aesthetic people and the Bhagavad rejuvenation, the leaders and the G spot and, and the John Wall and everything. But we now have a new indication which has been going on for some time. But we're getting one of the absolute experts about it to talk to us about penoplasty with the Murphala. Please uh, allow me to welcome Dr. Gary Horn. Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues, first of all, thank you for the invitation today. So I'm going to talk to you about the non-surgical penoplasty using garlic acid. We call it Anderfield technique. So, first question, why are we doing this? Uh, as a surgeon, I've been doing a lot of uh, surgical penoplasties, and I came across a lot of patients who had absolutely no fat value, and I had to find a solution for this uh, gentleman, and I decided to use fillers. But what kind of fillers were available? As you know, fillers have been used for a long time. In 1899, it was paraffin oil. In 1940, we started using silicone, especially to the breast with all the problems we know. In 1970, uh, collagen was used for the first time, and it was the only filler available on the market. And that has been around for the next 22 years. Hopefully, in 2003, was the time for uranic acid, and it became so popular, it was also approved by the FDA. Now, what is the definition of the ideal filler? The ideal filler should be oh, compatible, safe, stable at the implanted location, it should keep its volume, it should induce minimal foreign body reaction, including granuloma, and have no migration to other locations. What are now the difference between surgery and non-surgical treatment? So, what are the pros and cons for the surgery? Of course, with surgery, you can also increase the length of the penis by releasing the suspensory ligament. For the girls, we're using the own fat of the patient. We can use a large amount, and there's no cost involved. It's one single operation, so one simple general anesthetic, to increase at the same time length and girth. Apart, of course, for fat up, uh, in, in a few months later when necessary. What are the cons? Well, it has to be done with a general anesthesia, the recovery time is longer, it's about two weeks or sometimes more. And there are some frequent complications, including scars, infections, etc. And fat resorption, which is not on this list. And uh, the main thing for us was actually the patient needs to have sufficient fat to increase the girth. What about fillers? The pros for fillers, it's a simple procedure, it's a safe procedure, there's no downtime, it's actually a local anesthetic, as you will see. And the cons is, they uh, only last 18 months, and the patient has to come back for that. And of course, it involves a cost. Where to inject this fill? It could be injected in the subcutaneous layer, but you will see that actually, it's not the ideal situation, because you end up with some lumps. So we prefer to inject it deep to the dental fascia. There are some counterindications. We don't do injections for people who have severe fibrosis, a concealed penis with obesity, thick skin, uncircumcised men with redundant prepers, and I will add dysmorphophobic patients, which is the main concern, and also people who have sexual transmitted disease. What is the technique? Start with the local scrubbing. We apply endocrine, cream, but you will see that if we are using a cannula, I also add a local block. We can use needle 
or we can use the cannula, and it has to be done in a flaccid state. We don't want to do that in a erect state because it bleeds too much. The injection, again, is either subcutaneous, but we try to avoid that, or deep to the dietary special. If I use a cannula technique, I will take a 21 gauge cannula and it's a back and forth technique. The uh, site of uh, introduction of the cannula is just above the pinopubic junction, but it can also be just below coronal sulcus at 10 and 2 o'clock, especially if the patient is circumcised. So, what is the choice now between cannulas and needles? In theory, the cannula technique is better because we only use two or three incisions. There's almost no bleeding, definitely no lumps, but the incision site should be either sutured or sealed with glue. Otherwise, you bleed, you actually uh, lose your product. That's what I'm saying here. The filler can sometimes fall out. A cannula can be seen by patient as more traumatic, so that's why sometimes I have to use a needle because I can see the patient is not up to it. Or, if the patient is not circumcised, it's not always easy to use the coronal sulcus incision size. So, when we're using a needle, what are the pros and the cons? When I'm using a needle when the patient again is scared of cannula, when the patient has already multiple injections with cannula and he needs some specific areas to be tucked up. And when the patient asks for a glance injection that I do for premature ejaculation. What are the cons? If he has an injector in the needle, you have sometimes lumps and these lumps need to be massaged twice a day for the next three to four days. It's definitely a more bloody procedure, and there's also more risk to damage the dorsal vascular pedicle. Is there a risk of embolism? In theory, yes. Fortunately, we haven't seen any so far. How much is injected? Well, uh, generally the maximum injected per session is 10 mils. But when you add all the sessions, and we have patients are actually coming back, just like one guy came for five sessions, the maximum injected was 65 minutes. I'm not saying that the majority of patients, of course not. After the injection, I give some antibiotics for a week. Most of the time I try an elastic band for a week, and I recommend no sex for a minimum of a week, but preferably two weeks. Then with a needle, I uh, ask the patient to mold all the slums for the first four days, and if it's with cannula, he needs to stretch the penis and use a roller, well, actually do the, the roller technique at, during the uh, injection, but he has to stretch the penis and keep massaging a little bit for an even distribution. What is the expected gain in girls? The initial and the long-term result at 18 months are measured systematically at mid-shot on the stretched penis. And the gain obtained depends obviously on a lot of factors. The skin elasticity, the volume injected, etc. With 20 mils injected in different sessions, let's say two or three, the initial gain in girls is between 3 to 4 centimeters. The same measurements done at 18 months show the same result, 3 to 4 centimeters, due to what we call the isovolumic degradation of gyronic acid. What it means is that gyronic acid molecules tend to bind more water with time. <coughs> Some results, the first one I'm going to show you is with needles. So that's the before. Measurement, as you can see here, is about 12 and a half centimeters on the girls. And that's after. Measurement is 13 centimeters. So it's only 0.5 centimeters here. Another case before is like 9 and a half centimeters before. And that's after. 
and is 12 centimeters. So obviously, result varies due to different factors, stretch, the elasticity and the stretches, and uh, the amount of uh, um, volume of uh, the product injected. Another case before is eight centimeters before. That's afterward with a needle. And he has now nine centimeters. What are the complications? They're rare and temporary. On our series of 1,000 patients, we only had five infections that we treated with antibodies. We had seven granulomas that we treated with gyronic dance. We had one blue discoloration, no, we, sorry, we had no blue discoloration that we uh, called the Tyndall effect. You get this when the injection is too superficial. We had two filler migration that we treated with, again, gyronic dance. And we had one case of allergy that was treated with gamma dance and antihistamine. Conclusions. Um, Yarnic acid injections for non-surgical pinoplasties are ideal. Uh, they are biocompatible, non-antigenic, non-inflammatory, easy to use, stable after injection, there's no migration, there's long-lasting, but it's reabsorbable, it gives you a natural look looking. And compared to other fillers, it has an increased longevity and a low complication rate. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Horn, for the lovely presentation. We, we um, will have the question at the end as well. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that if the rotation uh, of the filler is right and if the quantity is right, there shouldn't be a problem like this. Personally, uh, my patient has said they have a, a better sex life and then no problem with the erections whatsoever. I, I also think that it's mostly for a patient to, come in, to have such procedure, he also has some psychological distress because of the size of the penis and that's why he wants to. So it raises his morale a lot yes. when he have a, when he feels that he has a bigger size. So he actually, his erection will be improved and his confidence will be improved.